What we're talking about tonight is the Antichrist, and we're going to bring Craig C. White on if we can get him to come on uh, with me tonight. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, it's good seeing you, Greg. We haven't talked, you know, we talked on the phone recently uh, with an article. So let's tell the people what's going on. Your website is hightimetoawake.com, and you've been doing Bible prophecy research and sharing, and you've written how many books? Uh, 17. 17. Wow. I was going to say yeah. seven, but that, wow, you've got a <laughs> lot of books out there. They're on yeah. Amazon. I purchased a few yeah. of them. Tell the yeah. people a little bit about your books, your website, and everything, and what we're going to discuss tonight. Okay. Uh, first of all, my, my books are, uh, almost all of them are on Bible prophecy, uh, and uh, one, one or two are, are general Bible teaching, and they're, all, they're also excellent. But uh, my books are generally pretty short and easy to read and inexpensive. So they're an easy study. I would encourage people to uh, check them out. And actually, uh, most everything on my, in my books is also on my website. So you can go to my website and, and read, but uh, my books are a collection of the cream of the crop and uh, stuff that you really need to know. And uh, I guarantee you that uh, there's a lot of information in each one of those books that will change your perspective on uh, Christ's coming and uh, even uh, change your position when you see Jesus Christ as far as uh, eternal rewards go. There's, there's something amazing in every one of my books. It's very powerful to have this information. That, that's my word for the month, powerful. <laughs> oh, very good. But um, So tell us, Craig, your website is hightimetoawake.com. Right. On the, I gave you a call the other day because the President Trump had the peace accord with Saudi Arabia and Israel. Can you elaborate on that? Because you, your website started to get a lot of hits on hightimetoawake.com as a result of what, what was happening with this uh, peace accord. Right. I'm sure almost everybody has heard about uh, Donald Trump helped to, to broker a peace accord between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. And... Uh, you know, they, they now they have diplomatic uh, ties, or they're or they're working towards that, which is a which is good. That's a good thing, and uh, a lot of people are thinking that uh, this is the seven-year covenant that's going to start the tribulation period. And uh, right. the seven-year covenant, first of all, has a seven-year term, so this probably is not this United Arab Emirates uh, peace agreement is probably not the seven-year covenant. But Daniel uh, 9.27 also talks about the Antichrist making a covenant or uh, confirming a covenant with the many. And right. uh, I'm, I'm thinking, I, I don't really know, but I'm thinking that uh, eventually more nations might join this agreement. And at some point, maybe the Antichrist will be compelled to join it as well. But I, I don't really know. But it's certainly, uh, it certainly is interesting when, you know, the traditional uh, enemies of Israel are starting to make uh, peace agreements. That's a very interesting thing, and we should definitely be very. paying attention to it. Yeah. yeah, this is this is crucial. What's going on right now? Now, the other news that was kind of uh, sparked my attention was the news about Erdogan going into the temple on the news report. I can't remember what news agency that was at the Hagia Sophia. If I'm saying that right. Yeah, close enough. Can you enough. elaborate? Uh, on, oh. Yep. Can you elaborate on that uh, a little bit? Yes, sir. On uh, Friday, July twenty fourth, two thousand twenty, which is just a, a couple weeks ago. Pardon me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Turkish President Erdogan sat in the Hagia Sophia Cathedral and recited the Quran. And uh, the Hagia Sophia is the oldest and largest cathedral, you know, Christian cathedral in the world. It was built as the uh, Greek Orthodox, Orthodox, uh, Eastern Orthodox 
Christian patriarchal cathedral, and it's about 1,500 years old. So that's very old. It's almost back to the time of Jesus. And uh, it, it, had, it was built as a cathedral when the Ottoman Empire was roaming the world. The Ottomans turned it into a mosque. And then when the Ottoman, M Ottoman Empire failed, the cathedral was turned into a museum. I mean, the mosque was turned into a museum. Well, just uh, a couple weeks ago, Turkish President Erdogan turned the Hagia Sophia Patriarchal Cathedral into a mosque again. And by doing that, he's uh, proclaiming himself as the sultan or caliph or ruler of uh, a revived Ottoman Empire. So that's significant in and of itself. Uh, well, that's that's a big deal. That's a big deal. But there's more to it than that. Because in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, it says that uh, the Antichrist will sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And Turkish President Erdogan, Erdogan sat in the Hagia Sophia, reciting the Quran and declaring that Allah was greater than the God of, of Israel or the God of the, the Christian God. So Erdogan sat, you know, in uh, the, the Christian building and declared those things. So when you go to Second Thessalonians chapter 2, that the word that's used uh, as temple or in temple of God, that word can be used for any sort of temple or shrine. It doesn't even have to be a Christian or Jewish. It can be pagan. So that right. word is very is very flexible, and uh, it does not have to refer to the temple in Jerusalem because a lot of people assume that it is the temple in Jerusalem, but it uh, I really don't think it is. I think uh, there are no other associated uh, events that are listed in Second Thessalonians chapter two that are similar to what what people call the. Um, abomination of desolation, which does happen in the uh, newly bit, built temple in Jerusalem. There's are two separate yeah. events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there, there's no stopping of the, of the uh, sacrifices. There's no mention of sacrifices in 2 Thessalonians. Uh, the Antichrist is not invading it, Jerusalem in 2 Thessalonians, but he is uh, in Matthew 24 and other places where it talks about the abomination of desolation. Different days, different events. And there's another reason why I think that uh, uh, Erdogan has declared himself or really officially revealed himself as the Antichrist in the Hagia Sophia. And by the way, that's in Istanbul, Turkey, if I haven't said that yet. Uh, it's because in Second Thessalonians, uh, Paul tells the early church members that two events must happen before the tribulation can begin. And those two events are the... Uh, falling of Satan from heaven to earth. And the second one is the Antichrist sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And on that same yeah. day, on that same day, the Erdogan was sitting in the, in the Hagia Sophia and, and reciting July 24th. Uh, that is July 24th uh, of this year. Yeah. Just last a few month. weeks ago. A couple weeks ago. Yeah. Anyway, on that same day, the comet Neowise was at its closest uh, proximity to the earth and the bible uh, describes the fall of satan as lightning uh, and also as having a tail and also as sweeping a third of the stars in heaven uh, neowise was one of the brightest comets <clears throat> that we've had and we don't really have very many comets not like this and plus it came out of nowhere no one even knew it existed until march and then the comet has a tail, and when it was leaving, just as it was, that was as it was leaving, two uh, major meteor showers in the northern hemisphere and in the he southern southern hemisphere started. And I think they're actually still going on now. I, I saw a couple of uh, meteors just two nights ago uh, in the northern hemisphere, so I think they're still going on. But uh, those, I think, those are signs that uh, that Satan has fallen, and just the fact that on the very same day that Erdogan was sitting in the Hagia Sophia, you know, saying that he would uh, praise Allah above all else, 
uh, that that meteor was at its very closest point to the Earth. So I think that those two events, the fall of Satan and the Antichrist sitting in the temple proclaiming himself as God, I think those events have happened. I, I don't really so, think they have. I know they have. So The Antichrist has is, been officially revealed, and it's Turkish President Erdogan. So the Turkish president, you have Gog and Magog, right? You have the, yeah. the land Turkey, and then you have the leader over Turkey. So that would be the president or the prince over Turkey, and that would be Erdo Erdogan, the Turkish yeah, and, president. And, yep. In Ezekiel chapter 38 and in Ezekiel chapter 39, it describes uh, the Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And it says that Magog will lead the Islamic nations into Israel. Uh, the chief prince means primary governor. And Meshach and Tubal are uh, princes. They're sons of Japheth. That first, which who was on the ark with Noah, <laughs> who first settled that region of Turkey. So the primary governor among the provinces of Turkey will lead the Islamic nations into Israel. And that today is uh, Turkish That's President huge. Erdogan. Yeah. And this is, this is huge news. Most Bible, end time Bible prophecy teachers don't even subscribe to what you're subscribing to. So you're very much coming out of obscurity. Uh, many of these other teachers think that Gog and Magog is Russia. And uh, you take it from the Word of God and the Scriptures. And this is a major sign that Erdogan is in the temple uh, speaking this poetic language and it, it's on a YouTube video, and we need to probably post that after this broadcast for those that would like to watch and witness. And it's translated, uh, closed caption, in English, what he's saying in his Turkish language. Uh, so this is exciting that he is talking about, you know, God and Allah, and, and he's in a Christian cathedral that was converted to a museum, that was converted to a mosque, and now he is looking to revive the Ottoman Empire. Now, can you share a little bit about and let the, you know, let the people know a little backdrop of the Ottoman Empire and how it got cut off at a certain time, and that was the royal Islamic kings. Share a little bit about the Ottoman Empire. Well, the Ottoman Empire was the longest reigning a world empire in the history of the world it was it was uh, they were ottoman ottomans are turks they were in uh, control for about 600 years and uh that was the last world empire that we've had and world war ii was basically uh fought to get rid of the ottoman empire and uh in 1923 that the ottoman empire was finally put to put to an end so that's only that hasn't even been a hundred years yet, and uh, Turkish President Erdogan has a goal of officially reestablishing that Ottoman Empire by 2023. So you know, hundred years after it stopped, and he's doing a very good job of it. Uh, Turkish President Erdogan has uh, influence all over the Islamic world, and the Turkish army is all over the Islamic world, or, or in a lot of places. So it's happening. Yeah, and a lot of people do not know that this is happening. And this is very strange that it's such a secret when these things are, you know, happening right before our eyes on the news. A lot of people just aren't, you know, paying attention. And I know you kind of, you know, you're watching over the, the current events and you're talking about current event news a week or a couple of weeks ago, uh, July 24th. And then here we have in, in uh, Erdo, Erdogan's castle, his main headquarters is a huge uh, property. I don't know how big the, the mansion is, but it's like a Nazi Germany mm. Hitler. Hitler had the big, you know, uh, headquarters, yeah. and he had the flags on both sides with the Nazi SWAT stickers. 
Erdogan has a big castle, and it's full of Ottoman uh, warrior costumes all through his castle. And he is big into the reviving of the Ottoman Empire, which is royalty, kings that ruled and reigned a long time ago. Can you share something about the head wound in Daniel with us tonight? Sure. Uh, let me talk about your uh, the, the palace for a second. Uh, Erdogan built a palace in uh, Ankara, which is the capital of Turkey, and that's pretty much right in the middle of Turkey. And uh, it's the largest palace in the world, and it has over a 1,000 uh, rooms. That's big. And in his palace, he the uh, the god of Ottoman conquest. There's all sorts of Ottoman 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 Empire memorabilia and you know, things, and it's very opulent. You know, a lot of there's a lot of things are covered with gold and and silver and jewels and everything else. And in Daniel, it talks about the Antichrist serving a god other than the god that his fathers served and also honoring it with great riches in his palace and that's exactly what Erdogan's doing he's not honoring Allah in his palace he's honoring the god of Ottoman conquest Turkish president Erdogan is the antichrist he's been doing that for years now there, it, there's no excuse for Christians not to understand that, especially, you know, Bible studying uh, pastors and teachers. But they've seemed to overlook it completely. But uh, now, can I just interrupt you for just one sure. second? I yep. want to show the people I have it on my lap, my uh, desktop computer. I'm going to push the button camera around so that those that are watching can see the magnitude of this palace that Erdogan lives in. Let me do that a little longer here. So here we have the palace. And when you take a look at it, look at the flags on there with the crescent moon. Look at the drapery hanging down. Look at this giant, humongous headquarters. And remember, Hitler had his red flags with the Nazi swastikers. Very similar, because the spirit of Antichrist, when it gets thrown out of one person, it'll go to another person, because we're dealing with eternal fallen angels. We're dealing with Satan's seat, Satan's uh, uh, main headquarters. So we're dealing with something that's rising out of obscurity, but it's in plain view, but the people just don't know what's going on. The churches just don't know what's happening. Craig, tell the people how serious this is. Well, it's it's the end times, and uh, the tribulation is very near. So uh, these, you know, when Erdogan sat in the Hagia Sophia, that's more than a sign. That is uh, that is the end of times. Uh, you know, for for the church, it's the end of the church age. The tribulation is right on our doorstep. You know, the, we have very little time left. And uh, I think the, the events that are going to occupy that time period are going to be the conquest of, of Syria by Turkey. Turkey's already uh, conquered a lot of, of, Syria, of northern Syria. And and in Jeremiah, it talks about uh, uh, northwestern Syria being attacked uh, specifically Hama and Arpad is what it says in Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 23. Arpad is Tel Rafat. That's where the Kurds are in the in the western part of uh, Syria. And uh, then, yeah, that's right. That's that's the path that they're going to, that the Turkish army will take down to Israel. They're going to start at Hama, go down to yeah, Damascus and destroy Damascus. Let me zoom in Damascus, a little bit. And then There's they're going Hama. into northern Israel. And then what happens when they get up to northern Israel? In Nahum chapter 1, it describes uh, Jesus Christ coming in a whirlwind of fire to the Golan Heights of northern Israel. So it's when that Turkish army and all the armies that it's leading enter Israel, then Jesus is going to come back in a, in a whirlwind of fire, come across that whole area, scorch the land, and cause them to retreat. And, and this then he's is... going to take us at the rapture. Can you 
Can you tell us what, what's in this particular book? This is Jesus Will Fight at the Golan Heights. Yep. Uh, that, that describes that uh, path that the Turkish army will take and the events that will happen when Jesus uh, comes back to stop that invasion. And there, there are a lot of other things in there. It's, uh, there's several uh, different kind of uh, current events in, in Bible studies in that book, as well as the uh, information about Jesus Christ coming. So if they go to your website right here, hightimetoawake.com, they can learn so much. And this book that you're, you have written, this one with Jesus will fight in the Golan Heights, I think every family should give that to an unsaved loved one. So when they see these things take place, they will know that time is even closer. Because Bible prophecy lets you know what's coming on the scene so that no more doubt, no more skepticism. When the Bible comes to pass, tell, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, when the Bible comes to pass and these things are being shown in real time, it is a serious issue to get a hold of God and to get closer to Jesus Christ. This is amazing. Uh, when we see these things happen, we know that the end is drawing near, that the soon return of Jesus Christ is coming back soon, and people need to be ready. But you need to equip yourself with the knowledge so that you know how to act, you know how to prepare, because you need to be prepared for eternity. You need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. What's some of the main oh. points for those that are listening well, right now to encourage them? <laughs> well, I think the main thing is to recognize that Erdogan has been officially revealed as the Antichrist. That's a huge deal. And uh, Paul, was, Paul said that that had to happen before the tribulation could begin. So now the tribulation can begin. That's scary. And, uh, yes. you know, the, the church will be saved from it. But I'll tell you what, a lot of Christians, I don't know, they, they, they don't seem to understand these things. And, uh, you know, they, everybody really needs to examine their heart and, and make sure that they're saved and, and do what you can to, to share this with other people. You know, they're unbelievers, you know, or find these things to be foolish. But I don't know, I, you, you got to at least try. And, uh, you know, especially your loved ones, try to at least tell them what's going on and, and make sure you're saved because the, the rapture's coming. And if you're not ready, you're going through that tribulation and that's going to be aw awful enough. And if you're right. never saved, you're going to hell, you know, which is even worse. Let me show but, him your big, the big book of Bible prophecy. It's only nine ninety nine. And the yeah. reason I'm really sharing this is I purchased this book. This book is full of information, yeah. revelation, and truth to help you make decisions today to quicken you onto the shortness of the hour. Time is short. Eternity is long. As Craig was saying, it's time to get right with God. It's time to repent. Because you need Jesus, and you need the Holy Ghost, and you need your name written in the book of life. Because the hour is short. We need our sins under the blood of Jesus. We need our names in the Lamb's book of life. God is serious when he's coming back. And he's not coming back as a lamb. He's coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Every knee is going to bow, and every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Now, I'm looking at your one book here, just kind of like the sample of your book that's talking about um, Turkey invades Israel, halfway to Armageddon. How, can you share a little bit about what's in that book? I see you have like uh, quite a few chapters, 19 <clears throat> chapters. Yep, that's focused on uh, Ezekiel chapter 38 and Ezekiel chapter 39. Both of those chapters describe a Turkish-led invasion uh, into Israel. And uh, Turkey will lead the Islamic nations into Israel. And uh, Ezekiel chapter 38, I believe, will happen just after Turkey destroys Damascus. Because every nation that's listed in Ezekiel uh, chapter 38, especially verse 5, is fighting in Syria. And 
whenever, and it's going to happen soon, when uh, Turkey comes down into Damascus, I think they're going to besiege the city for a long time until it's rubble. And uh, after that, they're going to have, you know, a million and a half soldiers uh, from all sorts of different places uh, ready to invade Israel uh, 30 miles away. So I really think that that's going to happen after uh, Turkey will lead the, the forces that are fighting in Syria now into northern Israel. And that's Ezekiel so, chapter 38. Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter, chapter 39. 38, yep. And Ezekiel chapter 39 will happen at the end of the tribulation period. And uh, that's the same as the battle of uh, Armageddon. And Jesus comes, Jesus comes back to wipe those guys out. In Ezekiel chapter 38, Jesus comes back to cause them to retreat. He draws that red line in the sand and causes them to retreat. So in both cases, God stops these 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 battles. So right now they're over in the Iblib, and they have their troops increasing, which is Arfat, Arpad, and yeah, the uh, other location. Jeremiah, Hama, Hama, the Jer Hama and yep, Iblib. Jer yep. The Turkish army is located right between Hama and Tel Rafat. Those are the two cities that uh, Jeremiah uh, identifies. And they have, Turkey has been pouring troops in there over the last year or two. I mean, they've been there longer than that. But uh, originally they had 12 military outposts in uh, Idlib province, which is located right between Hama and Tel Rafat. Now, nobody really knows how many they have. It's over 50, 55, 60. Nobody really knows because they've been pouring troops in there, uh, Turkey so, has. So, uh, so they're up here in the northern Syria, northwest Syria. Right. And then when they come down this travel line to Damascus, we're looking at Damascus being destroyed at a certain time in the future. Yeah, not in the not too distant future. As soon as as soon as you see the Turkish army that is already you know ready uh, amassed in northwestern Syria, as soon as you see them moving on Hama and Tel Rafat, then Jeremiah says that uh, the residents of Damascus will flee into Jordan, and then Damascus will be destroyed. And when the Bible identifies Damascus, it doesn't really talk about the entire city, although a lot of Damascus has already been destroyed. Really, the outskirts of Damascus have been destroyed today. The city of Damascus is actually still a nice place, believe it or not. But uh, Jeremiah identifies the very um, oldest and center of Damascus. It's called uh, the, uh, the Old Damascus Neighborhood, that's what it's called. And that's uh, the capital. And Jeremiah actually identifies that area. So for <clears throat> Jeremiah, <clears throat> excuse me, to be fulfilled and even Isaiah uh, chapter 17, verse 1, which talks about uh, Damascus becoming a ruinous heap, really only the capital neighborhood uh, needs to be wiped out. And uh, Turkish President Erdogan, 10 or 12 years ago, vowed to go into uh, Syria and into Damascus to remove Syrian President Assad. This is no secret that that's what he wants to do. And just the fact that Turkey has just been pouring troops into northwestern Syria over the last few months, nobody should be caught off guard with this. This is so obvious what's happening. And you know, so the Bible says Isaiah that, uh, 17, 1 and 2, and then you have Jeremiah 49, 25. That, yeah, Jeremiah. Gets, yeah, <clears throat> pardon me. Jeremiah has uh, much greater detail about the destruction of Damascus, and almost nobody ever talks about Jeremiah chapter 49, verses 23 through 27. But that is the, that's the important passage when it comes to the destruction of Damascus. Isaiah, so that's, it might somewhat, but Isaiah chapter 17 talks about the Assyrian destruction of Damascus in like uh, 734 BC, something like that, much more than the future destruction. Now, you did talk about the Assyrian and how it 
points to Erdogan. Can you share that with everyone that's listening right now? That's an important point to understand why Erdogan is identified as the Antichrist. Yeah, the Bible compares the Antichrist with the uh, Assyrian kings. <clears throat> and there were several Assyrian kings. Uh, and a lot of people think, well, that means he's from Assyria, which would be northern Iraq today. And uh, it's that's not why. It's because the, the Antichrist is compared to the Assyrian kings because he's going to do the same things that the Assyrian kings did. And what they did was uh, invaded Syria, conquered Damascus, and then uh, invaded northern Israel. And that's exactly what Turkish President Erdogan is going to do. He's in, north, he's in northwest Syria now. He's going to come down and conquer Damascus, and then he's going to come into northern Israel. Now, it's not going to go well for him in northern Israel, but it's still an extremely important event. And plus, it's the event where Jesus takes his church out of the world. I mean, and the tribulation, you know, uh, begins more in earnest. It's a huge event. So, uh, you know. Yeah, so people... People really need to have the go to your website, hightimetoawake.com, and study this out because you put so much commentary on there. You put so much current events, how they correlate to the, what's in the Bible, what's happening in Jeremiah 49, 21 through 27, and then Isaiah 17, uh, 1 and 2, and then Ezekiel 37 and 38. And it just makes sense. Now, an article came up the other day. We discussed it over the phone, and I want to remember to bring this up about the Antichrist not being homosexual, but many huh. have thought that he was a homosexual and that he did not regard the desire of women. There's a, a, a woman's movement, woman's rights movement in Turkey. And more and more women through uh, domestic uh, violence are being murdered, <coughs> excuse me, murdered in Turkey. And there's and violence against women is increasing in Turkey because, uh, you know, Turkish President Erdogan and and the uh, the power that, the, you know, the people who are in power in Turkey are, you know, Islamists and they believe in Sharia law and women don't have rights in Sharia law. So. Their women are protesting, uh, and they're trying. Uh, they're actually Turkey's part of an international treaty on women uh, protecting women, and Turkish President Erdogan wants to remove them from that treaty because he doesn't want women to have those uh, protections. He wants women to be second-class citizens, and and he wants men to be able to legally murder their wives if you if they want to. So anyway, yeah, he. The verse in Daniel chapter 11 is not saying that the Antichrist is a homosexual. It's saying that the Antichrist does not care about women's rights. And that's what's happening, and that's in the news now. And I, I wish people would be awake to that, but it, it, you know, it's very difficult to get people to admit that. So we see here, it's, it was on a different article, a news thing that was on my phone, and I saw that, uh, and it talked about... Uh, where women were endangered for their very lives in Turkey. So the oh, Antichrist yeah. does not regard the desire of women, of women's rights. It's not the desire for women as a homosexual would not desire a woman, he would desire a man. So do you see how easily the Bible prophecy guys interpret things, and if it's interpreted wrong, it throws a whole monkey wrench into the whole revelation and people are looking for someone else when here it is right in front of us. The news article was just this week, I believe, or last week about the women's being really endangered because of the, uh, the, the woman's rights being uh, violated. And, and er President Erdogan uh, just allowing that and fostering that and permitting it and actually sanctioning it. This is Antichrist right on the scene. It's undeniable 
when you look at it the right way through the light of the scripture. That's Daniel 11:37, I think. I don't know if I, I'm correct on that. But what do you think about that? That is just amazing to me. That's a that's a major identifier is Daniel 11, 37. I'm going to yeah, try to bring that up. It certainly helps. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the important thing, I, I've never I've never bought into the notion that the Antichrist was a homosexual because from that passage, you cannot declare that. You can, you can think about it. You can investigate that, you know, maybe that's a possibility, but it's not, it's not a clear statement that he's homosexual. And I've always, I've always, you know, held my opinion on that and, and, and thought it was something else. And it's pretty easy to see in retrospect, but uh, you know, it's better, especially when Jesus comes, it's better to understand what time we're in and, and the events that are happening. So we can give it a good account of uh, Jesus when we see him and we can be ready when we see that day approaching because we're going to be able to see the day of the rapture approaching because the Turkish army will be getting nearer and nearer to Israel. So if you know that you can watch, you can say, Oh man, you know, we have a, another week or two or three and Jesus is coming. So, and we can yeah. see it right there on the news. If we will do the research every day, you could do a Google uh, search for a certain topic of news, Erdogan or Turkish army coming to Damask, Damascus. And when that comes up, you'll get those alerts. You could do Google alerts for different news and current events. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. There, there's a lot of news out there that pertains to Bible events right now. Honestly, I, I, I usually do that every day. And um, I, I just search uh, for Turkey, Syria in, in, a, uh, you know, in my search bar. And, and you get all sorts of good information or maybe just Erdogan because he's been up to some nutty things. And, uh, you know, just very simple searches. The news is all over the place. You know, there's a lot of it. Like I'm reading an article, Middle East Turkey is enduring problem with women's rights. So yeah. there's Daniel 11:37 right there in front of us. Let me read Daniel 11:37 for you. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. In Second Corinthians 4:4. It talks about Satan, the god of this world system, uh, blinding the minds of them that do not yet believe. I, I like to use the word yet because it's yet to be transformed. And the, the glory uh, uh, manifestation of the Son, the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth, Jesus Christ, that he would shine on the hearts tonight as they're listening, that they would have clarity and that the confusion would leave their minds, the double-mindedness, the false uh, rhetoric that they've been under, those influences of this world that does not want them to get the truth, that doesn't want them to stir up that urgency or the gift of the Holy Spirit in them, those gifts to study this thing out, the hunger for the Word of God like never before. Craig, you're... you're you're the guy, I mean, since I've known you now, probably, what, a couple, three or four years, I think. Yeah. Yeah, at least three to four, uh, at least that many years. And, and from seeing you are consistent. Every time you're saying the same thing, every time I talk to you, every time I look at your website, every time I see your Facebook post, I see this article lining up with this scripture, and it's coming to pass. And I'm surprised you're not getting calls from all over the world by many pastors and coming to the forefront. I feel like it's time, or unless God's allowing it to be hidden just to those that seek him. But I, I truly believe God wants people to know in this hour he's coming back soon. The Antichrist is being revealed. The Antichrist is rising up. And we need to be ready for eternity. And we need to be ready to tell somebody about Jesus because nobody else will. And let me say thank you for coming on here such short notice. I mean, I really appreciate that, brother, because I just feel an urgency in my spirit. I see things just 
really different now uh, with the weather, the anomalies, and the things that are just everything in the government, on the streets, uh, in these other countries, the way they're treating the United States, how they're treating the president. I just see a lot of turmoil and a lot of uh, prayer, you know, a real a, a solemn assembly of prayer coming up and beginning to pray and begin to repent in behalf of this nation. Maybe it's too late. I don't know. But I always look for the best and the highest and to ask God to give us a reprieve, to give us more time. But it seems like when God gives the church more time, the church lays back and relaxes. It's time to take it by force. You know, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violence take it by force. And we need to get forceful with our prayer life, forceful with our fortitude and tenacity to keep moving forward, men and women of God, in this hour. It's, it's not the hour to sit back and just relax our grip. It's this hour that God wants to activate every believer to go into the highway and the byways and compel them to come in. Glory to God. Go ahead, Craig. Yeah. Can you pray for the people tonight and some closing sure. comments about your website, your book, how to get a hold of you for speaking engagements? Because I believe it's time for you to come forward. God bless you. I'm just scanning some articles as you're praying. Oh, okay. Heavenly Father, we uh, praise your holy name. and We give you glory. And Lord, we know that we're going to see your son face to face soon. I pray that we're prepared and watching. I pray that your Holy Spirit will uh, spark inside the hearts of many Christians and, and anyone uh, whosoever will come to you, even in these uh, last hours. And uh, open the eyes so that of many so that this world can be expecting Jesus Christ instead of uh, not expecting him. We glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen.